There is a very real debate that the Nintendo Switch is the absolute best Nintendo platform ever made. And that, that's really saying a lot. I mean, they've had some great consoles in the past. I grew up as a Nintendo kid myself in the 90s, but you have to acknowledge the massive library of games, of not just good games, but great games, that the Switch has built throughout this generation. Not only can you play all of these brand new exclusives, but you can also play a large portion of their older games as well. They've even remastered some of their all-time greats, and it's just such a fantastic console. That's why every single time I do these lists for the Switch, it's difficult putting them together because I can't include every single great game that it has. I did, however, manage to put a list together of 30 great Nintendo Switch games that you absolutely need to try. And before we start, just as a bit of a heads up here, for list purposes, I'm not gonna include independent games. This list is already pretty long as is, so I will have a completely separate video for indie titles in the future. Make sure to subscribe for all of that, but yeah, let's just go and get right into the list. I will try to go through this quick, but uh, go ahead and sit back, relax, and uh, maybe go ahead and grab a snack and drink, and let's have some fun with it. Number 30, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This is actually Kirby's first outing as a 3D platformer, and not only is it good, but dare I say it might actually be among the best entries for the franchise ever made. It really feels like a match made in heaven. Now, it's not necessarily an overly difficult game per se, uh, but what it lacks in challenge, it more than makes up for in its level design and fun factor. There's plenty of powers to inhale, there's a bunch of fun collectibles to find, and it's really just a pleasure to play through. Number 29, Bravely Default 2. Now, the Bravely Default franchise is easily among my favorite turn-based games ever made, and while Bravely Default 2 might not necessarily reach the same peak as the first two games on a 3DS, I'd still say that it has one of the best combat systems the genre has to offer. It's a series that takes a lot of inspiration from the classic Final Fantasy games, and, I mean, when I say classic, I'm talking about the old pixel art games like Final Fantasy IV. Bravely Default, though, can be a very challenging game, and you're going to need to take full advantage of its highly customizable job system to create the best possible team that you can. So if you're looking for a game with good, challenging turn-based combat, there's really not many out there that does it better than Bravely Default 2. Number 28, Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. It's so crazy to think about how this weird combination of Mario Plus Rabbids is actually one of Mario's better spinoffs. It's a humorous tactical RPG, and it all sounds bizarre on paper. I get that and everything because, well, it is, but it's actually a ton of fun to play. In Sparks of Hope, you do have quite a bit of control over its movement compared to other tactical RPGs, but that's one of the things that really makes it unique and special. Each character can work together to do things like team jump, and there's also plenty of customization by combining sparks together for different abilities. So absolutely do not overlook this game. There's a lot to like here, including its extra DLC, where you can actually play as the very beloved and never forgotten Rayman. Now we just kind of need to remind Ubisoft that we haven't forgotten. Number 27, visual novels like Danganronpa and Ghost Trick. Okay, if we're talking about strange games, I mean, we have to talk about Danganronpa and Ghost Trick. Yes, I did combine these games together, but that's because I think they'll both appeal to a very specific audience. They are both visual novels, and I'm telling you right now, if you want some crazy stories that's going to surprise you, these are some games that you need to play. Now, the Danganronpa trilogy is a pretty dark series. You more or less play as a high school student who wakes up in an unknown location, and in order to escape, they have to kill another student and get away with it. It's a great whodunit story, and I actually think that it has some of the more memorable stories in gaming, just period. Ghost Trick, on the other hand, is a story about somebody who was murdered and is now a ghost that can manipulate and travel through different objects. It's got some puzzle elements to it. I don't think it's ever really overly difficult, but as you unravel its mystery, there's a very interesting story here. For that matter, if you like the Ace Attorney series, Ghost Trick was actually made by the same person. Either way, though, if you like visual novels, which I think feels perfect for the Switch, you can't go wrong with either choice. Number 26, Near Automata. Now, every once in a while, we get one of those miracle switch ports that you didn't think was possible, and, well, Near Automata is one of those. It's a big AAA console game, and it surprisingly works very well on the Switch, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this game is without a doubt an absolute masterpiece. Like, there's very few games that's grabbed me in quite the same way that Near Automata did. Its world is atmospheric, its music is some of the best that I've heard in all of gaming, its story is absolutely fantastic, and most importantly, it's extremely fun to play. It's a great action RPG that continuously surprises you with new ideas, uh, but a little tip if you decide to play Near, just 
whatever you do, don't stop once you reach the end credits. This is a very different game that kind of continues its story through multiple playthroughs. Number 25. HD 2D remakes. One thing that I've really enjoyed about this generation is the return of classic JRPGs with that beautiful 2D HD art style. It's just such a brilliant way of bringing one of the most timeless art styles to the modern era. Another thing though is that it's also given us an opportunity to play these once overlooked games like Live Alive HD and Star Ocean Second Story R. Both these are remakes that a lot of people previously missed out on, and in fact, Live Alive was previously only released in Japan. Now, I will say though, that these are very different games. Live Alive is one of the most unique games on this list that tells a story of eight different characters in completely different eras, and its gameplay completely changes character to character. It's very well told though, and it is all connected. Uh, Star Ocean, on the other hand, is an action RPG, and I've never really seen a game look quite like this. I mean, we've gotten various HD 2D games, but none that looks quite like Star Ocean. Both these games though are exceptional in their own way. Number 24, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Unfortunately, a lot of people missed out during the Wii U generation, and that console will ultimately go down as one of the biggest blunders in console history, but but at the end of the day, it did have some great games, including Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. It's a great 2D platformer that offers some challenge, fantastic level design, and also a lot of variety. Each character has their own unique traits, and that adds an extra layer of depth to its already fun gameplay. Number 23, Mario RPG. Mario RPG has to be one of the most odd but charming Mario games that I've ever played. It's this bizarre collaboration between Square Enix and Nintendo, and as I played through this game, there were just so many times that I, I just kind of left surprised. Like, this is a completely different Mario than what we're used to seeing, but at the same time, that's also what I think makes it so special. If I had to describe Mario RPG using just a single word, I'd say that it's charming. Now, it is a little on the easier side of things for a turn-based RPG, but it is still a lot of fun to play. And then for its story and characters, that to me is what really makes it stand out. Number 22, Monster Hunter Rise. Capcom went out of their way this generation to create a Monster Hunter game with the Switch specifically in mind. And I have to say that Capcom knocked it out of the park with Monster Hunter Rise. This is not just some spinoff. This is a full-fledged Monster Hunter experience that takes the series back to a handheld device. And because of its art style, it looks great. What I really like about Rise compared to other Monster Hunter games, though, is its new gameplay additions. There's more mobility and verticality than ever before thanks to its new dog-like companion and the wire bug mechanic that lets you zip across its world. You can also use that in combat, which adds a whole new layer to its monster hunting. Number 21, Animal Crossing New Horizon. This game absolutely exploded when it first released. It was a true phenomenon, and it has gone on to be one of the best-selling games on the Switch to this day, which is crazy to think about. But there is a reason. It's not only adorable, but it's also a very relaxing and charming experience. It's also a highly addictive game. This is a social sim game where you create your own paradise. You do things like plant trees, catch bugs, go fishing, among several, several other things. And, you know, that might sound mundane on the surface, but don't be surprised when you log in daily as you build your very own paradise. Number 20, Splatoon 3. In typical Nintendo fashion, they took the shooter genre and somehow managed to make one of the most inventive, creative shooters around, being Splatoon 3. I mean, we're so used to gritty shooters, but here's this colorful game that combines platforming with paint-based shooting. It sounds weird on paper, but there's actually a lot of strategy involved, and it's just a blast to play. Splatoon 3 is also one of the more complete shooters around as well. There is a single player mode, you have a competitive multiplayer, and you can even play cooperatively with your friends to fight off waves of AI enemies together. Number 19, Dragon Quest 11. Now one thing that you've probably started to notice by this point is that the Nintendo Switch is kind of the king when it comes to JRPGs. There are just so many great JRPGs to play and, well, Dragon Quest XI is easily 
easily among the best. In many ways, this game is an old school turn-based RPG that came straight out of the 90s, but brought to a modern era of gamers. And I do say that in the best way possible. There's a reason that some fans believe the 90s was the golden age for JRPGs. In Dragon Quest XI though, you will go on a grand journey with a party of memorable characters. It has a fantastic story. It has that timeless Toriyama art style to it. And of course, it has strong turn-based combat. If you do miss those 90s JRPGs, then Dragon Quest XI is an excellent game to jump into. Number 18, Fire Emblem. Now for fans of strategy games, you really can't go wrong with the Fire Emblem series. Though there are two different games to choose from. There's Fire Emblem Three Houses, which has a social sim element to it, and then there's Fire Emblem Engage. Now Engage is the newer entry between the two, and if you're a longtime Fire Emblem fan, this one has a lot to offer because there is a ton of and I mean a ton of fan service. It brings back a lot of fan favorite characters, including Roy, Ike, Marth, yes, all of the Smash Brothers characters are there, and plus a whole lot more. Engage also kind of takes the series back to its roots, so if you don't like those social sim elements, Engage might be the better option of the two. Number 17, Neo, The World Ends With You. It's actually extremely disappointing to me that this series has somehow been overlooked, not once, but twice. First with The World Ends With You back on the Nintendo DS, and now with its sequel as well. These are very unique action JRPGs with so much atmosphere with their stylized art styles. The stories, the characters, the worlds, they're just so special and they, they really do stand out compared to other games. In each game though, you do find yourself in a parallel world where you have to play something called the Reapers game. If you win the game, you'll be able to return back to your own world, but if you lose, well, then you and your team will die instead. They have amazing stories and characters, and the only reason that I'm kind of talking about both of these games together is because their stories are connected. I do recommend playing both The World Ends With You and its sequel, Neo The World Ends With You. Both are available on the Switch. Number 16, Crash and Spyro. Now, if you're like me, somebody who grew up in the 90s, it's almost hard to believe that Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon are now available on a Nintendo console. But now that they are, they feel right at home. These are perfect games to play on the Nintendo Switch. You have the Crash Insane Trilogy as well as Crash Bandicoot 4. And these are very challenging and very unique 3D platformers. To this day, I've not played another platform that plays quite like the Crash series and does as good of a job. It's easily among the greatest platformers ever made. And you can also say the same thing about Spyro Reignited. Instead, though, Spyro is more of a traditional collectathon platformer. It's not quite as challenging, but boy, is it good. And plus, you get to play as a dragon. Spyro is one of the coolest mascots around. Uh, seriously, though, if you do like this genre, these are must play games. And technically, this spot actually includes seven total games. Number 15 Octopath Traveler 2. Now, we talked about HD 2D games earlier, and, well, that was actually all popularized by Octopath Traveler. This is a completely new, modernized JRPG that takes inspiration from Final Fantasy VI. And while I think the first game was good, I think its sequel, Octopath Traveler 2, is excellent. You have eight different characters with their own motives and stories. Some will be better than others, but it becomes a cohesive experience. It also has excellent combat to go alongside its beautiful visuals, and... I just think that this is one of the better modern takes for JRPGs, an instant classic. Number 14, Luigi's Mansion 3. Luigi's Mansion 3 is like this combination of Ghostbusters with the Mario IP, and I am all for it. You play as the scaredy cat brother in a spooky and quite frankly elaborate hotel. I mean, who knew that you could find complete deserts in a hotel, but that's the type of creativity that makes this game so great. There's a lot of variety as you hunt down these ghosts who kidnapped your friends. You'll solve puzzles, battle ghosts with the coolest vacuum that you'll ever see, and you even have a Goo Twin. Yes, you heard that right, you have a Goo Twin. I also have to say that this is a very good looking game and I would consider it to be one of the Switch's visual showcases. Number 13, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Okay, so it's been a while since we've gotten a brand new Prince of Persia game. And when The Lost Crown was first revealed, it, it wasn't exactly what people envisioned it would be. And that took a lot of people by surprise. I mean, fans were genuinely angry when this game was first revealed. But now that it's out, I can safely say that this is a fantastic game. It's actually one of the better Metroidvania games to date, just 
period. There's a lot of cool abilities to unlock. Its combat feels excellent. I like the boss encounters. The platforming is fun. And it even has a good story. It really is the whole package, which kind of makes sense in retrospect. It comes from the same team that brought us Rayman Origins and Legends. But seriously, I mean, do not sleep on this game. It really is that good. And it also feels perfect to play on the Nintendo Switch. Number 12, Astral Chain. Astral Chain is another really unique game on this list. It is a hack and slash style of game, but you actually control two different characters at once. You have the protagonist, and then you have this alien-like creature attached to a chain. You can even swap creatures for different abilities that you can use both in combat and for its puzzles as well. On paper, that sounds like it could be a mess, but this actually works surprisingly well. It's also another visual showcase for the Nintendo Switch. The neon colors pops off screen, especially on the Nintendo Switch OLED. Number 11, Bayonetta. There's some games out there that's just quite simply fun with a big capital F-U-N. And that's exactly how I would describe the Bayonetta series. You can play the entire trilogy on the Switch and they're, they're really just S-tier hack and slash style of games. Now the stories are a little over the top, but you know, that's the thing, because they're always entertaining. They don't take themselves overly serious, and they lean on the thing that I just talked about. They're F-U-N. Fun, fun, fun. I will say this, though. There is a big jump in quality from Bayonetta 1 to 2. So if you do start out with that first game, don't stop there because it only gets better from there. Then from 2 to 3, it adds even more combat options by including monsters that you can control in battle. All three of these games, though, are absolutely amazing, and if you like them enough, maybe go ahead and try the spinoff as well, Bayonetta Origins. Number 10, Zelda Link's Awakening. I've always had a special connection with top-down Zelda games. These are some of my favorite games growing up, and while we haven't gotten a completely new installment since the 3DS, I mean, come on, Nintendo, let's make this happen. But we did, however, get a remake of the beloved Link's Awakening, and this one is truly special. I mean, it's got such an odd world and story, but it's something that really sinks its hooks into you. There's a mystery involved that just sticks with you, and it's something that you're going to remember for a long time. Now, as for its gameplay, it doesn't necessarily have a huge world. This is technically an old Game Boy game, but it's perfectly put together with a ton to do around every single corner. Number 9, Metroid Dread. Nintendo might be dragging their feet for a brand new top-down Zelda game, but they did, however, deliver us a brand new 2D Metroid game this generation, and boy was the wait worth it. The planet of Metroid Dread is more hostile than ever before, with killer robots that'll hunt you down, and if you like Metroidvanias, there is a ton to explore here. It has a massive, atmospheric, and mysterious world to uncover. Where I think this game really separates itself from past entries, though, is with Samus' mobility. She's much more agile in this game, and I think that really makes its exploration and backtracking specifically feel that much better. Number 8, Pikmin. The Pikmin series for years has secretly been one of Nintendo's best franchises. It really has everything that you want from a Nintendo game. It's charming, it's unique, it's got a great art style, and most importantly, it's a lot of fun. Even better is that you can now play all of the mainline Pikmin games on the Nintendo Switch, being 1 through 4. Now, Pikmin 1 is my own personal favorite, as I really enjoyed its time management aspect, but if you've never played these games, they're special for a reason. There's not many games out there that plays quite like them. I mean, I guess on the surface we can say that it's a strategy puzzle game, but there, there really is just so much more to this series than that. You play as an astronaut who goes to an alien planet, a desolate Earth, and in order to survive its hostile conditions and to complete your goals, you have to utilize these little alien-like creatures named Pikmin. And in Pikmin 4, you even have a dog-like companion. They all have their own unique abilities, and it's just also captivating. I really can't recommend these games enough. Number 7, Persona. Anytime there's a discussion about the greatest JRPGs ever made, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to hear about the Persona series, and well, there's a very good reason for that. They are legitimately some of the best games ever made thanks to their stories, their music, their worlds, their characters, and even their turn-based combat. They really have everything that you want from a game like this. And the great thing here is that you can now play Persona 3, 4, and 5 on the Nintendo Switch. There's even some spinoffs, including Persona 5 Strikers and Persona 5 Tactica. Now, I will say, even though Persona 5 Royal is the most popular, which, hey, that's fine because it's a great game, but for me personally, Persona 4 is actually 
my favorite. I mean, all three of these games are great in their own way. You really can't go wrong with any of them. But what these games are is that you play as an everyday student who uncovers a parallel world that affects their own real world. So the gameplay is then divided into two. The human world where you manage your everyday school life and relationships, and then the demon world where you catch and battle monsters. It's a perfect blend and its mysteries are always S-tier stories. Number six, Metroid Prime Remastered. Now, Nintendo might call this game a remaster, but don't let that fool you. This is actually just flat out one of the best looking games that you can play on the Nintendo Switch. Its visuals really do pop off screen, and its gameplay not only aged well, but it's better than ever before. Of course, Metroid Prime is one of the most atmospheric games around, and its visuals only ramps that up even more. But it's not just its visual improvements that makes this such a good version to play, but it's also its improved controls. They give you various options to choose from, which includes the much needed dual analog support. Even better is that it supports gyro controls, which really fine tunes the aiming that much more. No doubt about it, Metroid Prime is one of the best games ever made, and the Switch Remaster is now the best way to play it. Number five. Pokemon Legends Arceus. As a huge Pokemon fan myself, I was a little skeptical when this game first got announced. It is a big departure from the mainline series after all, but ironically, I, I think it might actually be the best and most refreshing Pokemon experience that we've gotten in a very, very long time. I love the art style in Legends Arceus, and because it focuses on the origins of Pokemon, it's unique compared to other Pokemon games. Pokemon aren't simply friends that you battle alongside in Legends Arceus. They're a little bit more aggressive in this game and they will attack you like wild creatures. The story is also actually really interesting as well and even the turn-based combat can actually be challenging. That is something that I've wanted from the Pokemon series for a very long time. My only real complaint about this game is that I wish they had more trainer battles because they, they do feel really good in this game. But the Pokemon Company is definitely onto something here and crossing my fingers that we get more games like this from them in the future. Number four, Xenoblade. Much like Pikmin, I would kind of describe the Xenoblade series as secretly being one of Nintendo's best franchises. It might not necessarily be as mainstream as some of their other games, but the quality is just otherworldly good. They all have great stories and great characters. Now, the combat is a little bit different. I guess if I compared it to anything, uh, it plays kind of like an MMO where you choose your attacks in real time. Uh, but it's still a lot of fun and has plenty of strategy. If you're new to the series though, each game does have a standalone story, but I will say that they are still connected and that really reveals itself in a third game. So I would recommend playing through the entire series and luckily you can play through Xenoblade 1 through 3 on the Nintendo Switch. Number three, Smash Brothers Ultimate. I mean, it's absolutely crazy when you start to think about what Smash Brothers Ultimate achieved this generation. In many ways, it's a tribute to gaming history, with some of the most beloved icons brought together for a single roster. I mean, you can play as Cloud from Final Fantasy, Sora from Kingdom Hearts, Red from Pokemon, Ryu from Street Fighter, or even Banjo-Kazooie, which is owned by Microsoft. It is truly insane just how many characters they got for this game. But what makes it even better is that you can tell that they're passionate about bringing these characters to life. It's incredibly fun, and it's also one of those games that's easy to pick up and play, but it also has a very high skill ceiling if you want to fully dive in. Number two, Mario. Okay, so for list purposes, I just went ahead and combined all of the mainline Mario games. That way we can highlight some other great games as well, but this entry does include Super Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart 8, and Mario Wonder. If you like 3D collectathon platformers, I mean, there's a very real argument that Mario Odyssey is among the best ever. Then you have Mario Kart 8, which is just insanely fun. This game has been around since the Wii U, and it's got on to be one of the most successful games ever made for a very, very good reason. It's just pure chaos and pure fun. Then you have Mario Wonder, which goes back to the days of 2D platforming with a whole new bizarre twist. Each level is completely different thanks to its wonder mechanic, which brings tons and tons of surprises. I will say that I think Mario Wonder is a little bit too easy, but it is one of those games that's fun to pick up and play for the entire family. Number one, 
Zelda. I mean, of course, Zelda had to take the number one spot because they are that good. Uh, but the only thing about this entry is that I, I think there is a debate on which Zelda game you might prefer. There's Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, which are full-blown open-world games. If you do like exploration, there's a ton of things to do in these games and a lot of secrets to uncover. These are by far the most popular Zelda games ever made as it introduced a lot more people to the franchise. But one thing that they really lack are those classic style dungeons and tools that you unlock as you progress. So if you do prefer that more classic style, then Skyward Sword HD is a really good entry. I actually think that Skyward Sword has the best Zelda story. Uh, it has a great art style. And yes, those dungeons are fantastic in this game. Now, personally, I actually prefer Skyward Sword HD over the open world games. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, these are all great games. And it, it's really just up to the play style that you prefer. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'll rank the Zelda games in a future video, but one way or the other, I love me some Zelda. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this list. Whew, that was a lot to get through, but uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it. Uh, as always, though, let me hear your favorite games in the comments below. But until next time, peace out.